Hi, my name is TJ Thompson, and in this video, we're going to be going over the advanced features inside of vMix Replay. We have a previous video that goes over some of the basics of how to set up a project and do a simple instant replay event. If you haven't watched that, I suggest checking that out first and then coming back over here. For this workflow, we're going to be thinking in the mindset of a single replay operator. That means we're going to be in a production environment where we have a switcher that we're going to be sending our replay channels out to. So not a one man band scenario here. This is you're going to be building packages. You're going to be building highlights, melts. You're the replay operator for this production. And as so, your machine will be set up solely for replay. To do that, we've got to make some hardware configurations and some software configurations to make that possible. This machine that I'm going to be working on today has a black magic card in it. And we're going to be bringing in our cameras through that card, but also we're going to be outputting our replay channel A and replay channel B using our vMix external outputs. vMix allows us to bring in eight cameras of replay and output two channels. That's the max that it's capable of currently. I recommend if you're building out a sole replay machine, it's pretty cost effective to get an eight IO card that gives you six inputs and two outputs. It's a great starting point. If you have a lower machine, lower, you know, horsepower machine, you could use it as a four input to out machine. And if you upgrade your graphics card or your CPU over time, then you could bring in six cameras. If you get any bigger, you can add another card and do the full eight with two outputs. But I feel like that's a really good sweet spot on the hardware. Now we're going to be bringing in our cameras through a video router. That means that the camera's sources are going to be split to the replay machine and to the production machine. So we're not going to be worried about cutting cameras. Our cameras are going to come directly to us via the Blackmagic card, and we're going to output to the switcher via our externals inside of vMix. We're also going to be adding a designated control surface to use for our operator. In this case, I'm going to be using the X keys replay controller. Uh, it's one of my personal favorites, but there's tons of other options out there, including JL Cooper. There's the Shuttle Pro. But this one comes out of the box with vMix with a template already built. So there's not a heavy lift to get started quickly. So let's jump into vMix and go ahead and make these software changes that match these new hardware configurations. So you can see here we already have our replay session built from our last video and our four cameras inputted. We're going to go ahead and add those cameras now to our replay event. So I'm going to hit the cog wheel and you can see here these are the cameras we added from our last video. We're going to go ahead and add the remaining cameras. There's a couple other changes we're going to make in here as well. In our last one man band video, we had a transition of a stinger when we brought a replay event on. Well, for this, we don't want a transition because the TD director is going to do that. So we're going to set this to a cut. And I'm going to select it to 100 milliseconds, even though it doesn't make a difference. It makes me feel better. Same thing for our out transition. We're going to set that to 100. So now when we play a replay event, we're not going to have any sort of transition on the front end or the back end. That's going to be the sole responsibility of the director. We're acting as a solo operator again. Next, our event transition will stay the same. I like a 200 millisecond fade here. I'm keeping the same replay session settings with low quality. There's a couple other things we want to go in here and maybe make some adjustments to that we didn't do earlier. Pre-roll allows us to add time to the beginning and end of a clip. So if you want to add a little pad on the front end or back end, you would do it there. There's also a couple other options here. You feel free to, to go through those. The ones that concern me the most are the event names. And you can see that there's a four digit ID or a three digit ID here. We're gonna leave this at four. What these event names do is it basically changes the names of all of these one, two, three, four, five, six to uh, actual character, a four digit character. So I always name the first one all because that's where I'm gonna keep all of my clips. And then since this is football, we're gonna say that that's like the first quarter, this is the second quarter, and then we'll make a rollout there at the end. We'll do that for now. Uh, music, we're not going to worry about any sort of background music. This is where you could add music to play in your replay session. Now let's go over to tags. This is where we can actually add a label to our replay clip. Like uh, let's do in a home TD. 
an away TD. Uh, we could do a flag. We could do uh, a home field goal and away field goal. And you can put as many of these as you like in here and just separate them line by line. I use H and A as home and away, but you could come up with whatever convention works best for you. Next, we're gonna to go to our options, and we're just gonna to wanna to make sure that these are still checked from our last video, right? Show live sources, and when in live mode, we wanna see a preview, when not in live mode, and we wanna make sure our audio is gone when it's below 100. All those look great, so we're gonna click OK. Next, we're gonna set up our outputs. So we have our cameras set up for our replay event. Now we're gonna to go to this external button, and we're gonna click our cogwheel here, and we're gonna to go to Output NDI SRT settings. Now you can get to this in the settings menu as well, but this is just a quick way to get to it. And we're gonna go to our, our outputs here. We wanna set output one, which is tied to external one, to our replay channel A. Now, if I'm gonna move this window here, and you can see that replay channel A is number 11 right there in the corner. So I'm gonna set this to number 11. And then replay B is number 12, so I'm going to set this to 12, like that. Now we've got one more thing to do, and that's to go over to our external output, and we're going to turn on external render, right, right there. I'm going to undo this display settings. I want to make sure this matches our project frame rates. And now I'm going to select my device. I'm going to see that I want to output this in my deck link card. Now there are two deck link cards in this machine, so don't wig out when you see all of the different ones and twos. Uh, so the parentheses gives you an idea of, of where you're at. So deck link quad one one is the first input on our first deck link card. Deck link quad one nine would be the first input on our second deck link card. So don't let that confuse you. We're only gonna use output seven and eight. So we're gonna make our first one deck link card seven and our port is gonna be SDI, that's gonna be default. But this audio channels master, this is where you can decide how your workflow is. I like my channels to be separated. To do this, I make the replay output A go to bus A, and then I make the replay channel B go to bus B. I'll show you how to set up the buses in just a sec, but let's go ahead and select that here, so I want replay channel A to audio to be the bus A audio. I don't want there to be any audio delay and that's gonna be my external one. Let's hop over to external two. We're gonna do the same thing, turn on external render. We definitely don't want that to be 4K. Uh, and then we're gonna select our device to be number eight. Our port's gonna be SDI, oh, DVI, that would be amazing. Uh, our audio channels are gonna be bus B. So now we're all set, I'm gonna click OK. Next, we're gonna go over to our audio mixer. If you'll notice, we don't have any buses down here. We have our, our replay channels here, A and B, but there's no buses. To do that, we're gonna go to settings. We're gonna go to audio outputs, and we're gonna enable bus A and bus B. Now you're gonna freak out because VMix is gonna say it wants to restart. Just go ahead and let it do its thing. When you make audio changes, it's something that happens inside of vMix. No worries. You don't want to do this during a production. You know, you always want to set this up beforehand, but go ahead and click OK. All right, now vMix is loaded back up, and look at there. We've got two new audio buses. So I'm just going to go to our demo A. I'm going to turn it on, so the audio is now on, our little speaker. I'll make it not follow video, and I'm going to assign it to bus A, take it out of the master, do the same thing here for B. Now what we've done is we've said, oh, let me actually change that to B. There we go. Now what we've done here is we've actually said channel A, you're gonna be going out of bus A. Channel B, you're gonna be going out of bus B. And we're gonna make sure that those don't go to the master. And on our external outputs now, since we assigned bus A, bus A is gonna be embedded on our deck link output seven. So all that's gonna get married together and head over to the switcher. Same thing with our B channel. The bus B audio is gonna get married with the B output video of the replay and it's gonna show up at our switcher all together and play nicely. So now all of our audio is set up. 
let's go in and start taking a look at what we can do inside of vMix Replay. Jumping over to the Instant Replay tab now up here in the corner, we're gonna open this guy up and I'm gonna unpin this and make it full screen. Now yours may look like this when you unpin it for the first time, the monitors might not be there, but you can always select the monitors button and now you'll see all of your cameras. Now nothing's moving because we haven't started recording yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit our record button down here. Now what we're looking at in this view is our replay channel A output, our B output, and then our four cameras. If we did have eight cameras in here, there would actually be eight total boxes over for in the corner. I'm only doing four just for the screen real estate for this demo, but this is where your other four would pop up as well. There's also a replay multi-view that you can use that can be used on a second monitor. If you're a solo operator, this is great because it gives you a full screen multi-view of your replay inputs and outputs. Looking at the top, we see that we have our events list here that have our pre-designated titles. We also have a clip in here that we use from our last project. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that by just right clicking and then hitting remove. So we're gonna get that guy out of here and now we're starting fresh. Now there's a lot of options in here, right? We can mark in and out points, we can select our camera sources, uh, this is how we would select what camera is going to what output. It's a lot to click through. I mean, if, if you were going to put camera two on an output, try to back this up, get out of the live mode, it's really hard to do that as a solo operator, which is where the control surface comes in. Adding a control surface, even if it's just the jog and shuttle portion of a control surface is invaluable. But there's some lifting to do to get that set up mainly it's creating shortcuts. So let's go in and show you how to set up a control surface and where all the shortcuts are located. I'm gonna shrink this down and we're gonna go back to our settings tab and click on shortcuts. Now I'm gonna to go to the templates button and click right here on replay XKE64. This is the controller that I currently have in front of me and you can see here that it's already pre-configured to run a replay event. Now, all of these shortcuts are available to view at vmix.com. I'm gonna flip over there now so you can take a look at it. If you go to support, documentation, and then down here in the corner, you'll see shortcut reference. And we're gonna scroll down to our replay. Uh, that's our output, title, input, way down at the bottom, overlay, replay, there we go. So here you go, you can see all of the different shortcuts that you can use. Now you can use whatever control surface you want in conjunction with these replay shortcuts, but we're just gonna use our X keys for today. All right, so let's jump back over to vMix. I'm gonna close that out. I've already set up my controller. If you haven't set up a controller or shortcuts, there is a video you can check out with how to set up shortcuts within vMix, so you can go do that on your own time. We're just gonna go right into a demo of how to do some instant replay. So I'm gonna close this guy out, uh, click OK, cancel, and we're gonna open our window back up here, and we're gonna go over this live button right here. So if you can see right now, we're in an edit mode. So down here, there is a playhead marker. This giant dashed line that's across the screen is a ginormous timeline from where we very first started recording to where we are at in our present time. This little two arrowed button here, this jump to most recently recorded frame button, I call this the go to now button. It means that you're gonna go to the, the right now, the very most recent point in time that's happening right now. So if I click this button, you'll see all the cameras jump, boop, to the very most recent frame that we've recorded. If I keep hitting this, it's gonna keep updating, right? Because I'm not looking at live cameras, I'm in an edit mode looking at the most recent time. If I scroll back, I'm going to use my jog wheel here. If I scrub back, you can see that I'm going backwards in time. If I go forwards on my scrub wheel, my playhead arrow is moving and time is moving. If I need to go to the most recent place in time, all I have to do is click that button or on my controller, I have a go to now button. When I'm in the live mode, 
I'm going to select the live mode here, and you can see that all the cameras are moving now. If I'm to scrub my timeline, me, if I turn my wheel here, nothing is going to happen. So let's fly through time. You'll see my playhead's moving, but the cameras aren't. I'm going backwards right now. I should be going backwards. If I go forwards, uh, nothing's happening. I'm going forwards right now, and nothing's happening. That's because we're looking at live video. That means that any changes we do right now, if we created an endpoint or an outpoint, is going to be affecting these live frames. So if I mark an endpoint right now, it's going to mark it in the live video that I'm watching. If I mark an outpoint, it's going to mark it at the live frame that I'm watching. Whereas if I'm not in the live mode, let's turn that off, and I mark an endpoint now, it's going to be where this playhead is. So if we're looking at coach there in the middle and we want to see him yelling and I mark an endpoint there, then it's going to be marked in the timeline there. And if we want to keep it to where he's yelling at him a little more in points and that's our out point, it's going to mark it there. So it's almost like an edit mode and live mode is how you can kind of think of it. I know there's only one button that says live, but that's the best way to do it. Um, I like to live in the edit mode as a solo operator. So I live in this mode, and as soon as I hear something happen, I hit go to now, and I back it up, and I can see what happened, right? Um, it's really easy to build packages in the edit mode. You're kind of working through that, and as soon as an event happens where you need to do an instant replay, you hit your go to now button, you back it up, and then you play it out. So let me show you how that would look, okay? So I'm sitting here in the edit mode. I can be scrubbing away, and oh, the director tells me there's a big play that happened. I'm going to hit my go to now button. I'm right there. Oh, that was actually a touchdown. I'm going to back it up. It looks like a run. Boom. We're right there. We're already ready to go. We can fire out our instant replay event just that quick. We can tell the director if it's on A or B, and then all we have to do is hit play, and it's going to play it out. Now, at this point, I'm looking, and I see that A has a good look, and B has a good look. Let's kind of scrub through. Yeah, it looks like both cameras have a good look. So I would probably want to show both of these camera looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlink channel A and channel B. So I'm going to do that with the mouse just so you can see here. So I'm going to click on A. Now we are just operating in channel A. I'm going to take my T-bar here for time and I'm going to set this to about 50% and I'm going to hit play. Now that is playing out at 50% in channel A. I'm gonna jump over to channel B using my B button here, and I am gonna say, hey, director, I have another look on B. Do you wanna see it? I'm gonna take my time on that to 100, and he's gonna say, yes, play it out, and I hit play, and now we're playing our channel B output, and they're completely independent, right? I could go back over to A, I'm gonna hit my A button here, and I could reset that and I could start editing, make it in and out point for that or whatever. Oh, look, there's a celebration that's good. Completely independent. Or I could regang them using the A, B combine button here, and they're back together, and we can start cutting away. So that's how I do instant replay. I tend to sit in the edit mode, either watch program on a separate monitor, and then as soon as an event comes up that has to happen, I hit my go to now button, and then I just play it out. So I'm not making an event or I'm not making a clip. Once it happens an instance over and it's something I like, let, let's say I like the celebration, then I'll go back in, mark an endpoint or an out point and create an event. All right, now we're back inside of vMix and I've gone ahead and made a couple clips here. All right, so I've went ahead and put all of these in the all playlist or event list here. And you can see that Nothing is in our first half, nothing's in our second half, nothing's in our rollout. Let's go ahead and say we want to make a package that we want to play for the end of the game. So I can look through here and I can kind of sort through these. It looks like that was the touchdown, this is the celebration, um, some cheerleaders, uh, we've got opposing team kind of walking out, and then this is a play. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add these clips to my rollout. To do that, I'm going to right click on each clip. But actually, you know what, before I do that for better organization, I'm going to actually name these. So if I actually double click in here, or actually right click in there, sorry, you can actually type what this was. So this was our HTD, right? We could select it like that, or we can pull from our drop down menu. Um, this was a H. 
celebration, right? Um, what do we got over here? This was cheerleaders. So I'm going to click in there and I'm going to cheer. And then uh, what else do we have? This was like an away team guy. Um, away walk. And uh, let's just say this was like, this was an away run. So now we've got all those kind of organized. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go copy to. I suggest you use copy to instead of move to. If you use move to, it's going to take all these clips out of this event list and put it into our rollout event list. I like keeping everything I've ever marked in the all. That way, if I need to go back and find something, it's there. It doesn't get deleted. It doesn't get misplaced. It's always there. So I recommend you use copy to. So I'm going to select copy to rollout. Now I'm going to click over here in our rollout tab and we're going to clean this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the first clip and I'm going to go down to our play events button. Now you see here we have a play all, play select it, play each angle or play by ID. Pretty self-explanatory play all is going to do all of them. Selected is the ones that we have selected. Each angle means that it's going to play every camera angle of every clip. You may want to do that or you can play by ID. You can click on that and search for an ID, one of those tags, and you can play things out by that. That's kind of cool if you have like a player number that you want to highlight. So it's been like, you know, uh, number five has been running a lot and you've tagged things with five. You could go in there and create a, a package pretty quick. We're going to go with play all. So if I select play all, it's now going to play our entire rollout list. So you see it's using our fade transition. It's kind of cutting in between everything. There's our walkout player. So this all looks good, except I don't really like the order. I think I want to end. So I want to start with this guy walking out, then the run, and then we want to do all the cheerleader stuff at the end. We'll kind of end with that. Also, this cheerleader clip was a little too short. It's only a two second clip. So Let's go ahead and work with our organization. All I'm going to do is I'm going to click our walk and I'm going to drag this guy up to the top. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to drag him up to the top and then I'm going to reorganize with our walk next. Uh, then we'll do home touchdown, home celebration and our cheer clip. I'm going to click on that guy. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my shuttle control here and I'm going to just kind of move this forward. So. I want it kind of right there where she is last waving and we start seeing some fans. Now we could do this by dragging our out point here, but I'm going to use the controller to go a little bit faster. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually update the event out point. So I'm going to hit event out and I'm going to mark that and you see our time change. Now I'm going to play out our entire playlist again using my event play all button. We're going to check that out and see how it looks. So there's our guy walking out. Yeah, then it transitions to the run, a tackle. We got a touchdown here. There's the celebration and then the cheerleaders and we're on our way out. And that looks great. So we created a nice little package. We can roll that out of A. You can see it playing out of A there. And you can even see the audio. I'll play that back again. You can see the audio meters bouncing there. So that would be coming down our A channel as well. Now, if we wanted to export this at the end of the night, we could go to our export clips button right down here in the bottom. We could select the folder where we want to send that out to. We can give it a name. We can even select the quality. You can do vMix AVI, which would be obviously the higher quality option, or you can do an MP4. Uh, you can select the audio channels you want, whether you want two channels of audio or four channels of audio. For this, it's just going to be the two channels and the camera mics that we have. Um, then we're going to go with our uh, events. We can either do a selected event or you can do all the events in the playlist. So if you're going to send out a melt, you would want to do all of them. And you definitely wouldn't want to export them separately. Uh, I guess if you wanted to cut up highlights later, you could do that. But if you want it all together and what you just saw, you would want to uncheck that box. Hit export. And then you have an amazing melt that you can send down the line at the end of the night or save for highlights to cut later. VMix Replay is a super versatile system. It's helped our business grow with the flexibility to scale it up or down given the production. We can do a small high school show all the way up to an ESPN broadcast. It is a very flexible tool. And if you have any questions about VMix Replay or VMix in general, send an email to support at vmix.com. I'm TJ, and thanks for watching.